Donald Trump is in more hot water because of comments he made recently about uh, Muslims in America. More specifically, he's released a press release on his website that calls for a moratorium on bringing Muslims to the United States until we can, quote unquote, figure out what's going on. Now, my feelings on it, I think that but before I get into my feelings, I want to also talk about what it says in the actual press release. In the press release, he cites a poll from a website, which I'll put in the description box below. And I'll also put his press release in the description box below. But the poll says out of the people that were polled, 25 percent of those people believe that violence against Americans is justified in the name of Islam. 51% of those believe that Muslims should be governed according to Sharia law within the United States. Now, 25%, I mean, that's one in four. That's pretty bad. The poll size is about 600 Muslims living within the United States. But if you're talking about one in four or one out of every two that believes in Sharia law, which is, some, which is definitely not a good thing. I mean, Sharia law... That's what, you know, in Saudi Arabia, they have. It goes against our constitution. Church and state is separate. In Sharia law, the church is the state. The mosque is the state. The laws come directly from the, the Quran. Women must be covered up in a burqa or a hijab or a niqab. You know, there will be no other practicing of any other religion. You can be stoned to death. For a variety of different offenses, including being raped, stealing. So if you want to talk about Black Lives Matter and police brutality for somebody robbing the store and getting killed afterwards. Imagine your sister gets raped by a gang of three Pakistanis and her punishment is being stoned to death. And that's an extreme example of Sharia law. But you have to understand this is the end game for Islam. Now. Back to what I. To my personal feelings, I think that I think that uh, saying that all Muslims being banned from the United States is extreme. I say that we shouldn't. We should ha we should have a moratorium on people that come from Islamic countries. No Syrian refugees. No people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia. You know, and if you want to come over here. And you're coming from those countries, you need to be put on the watch list. <laughs> you know, that should be the criteria to get put on the watch list, not just a regular American tweeting something about the NRA. And then the NSA puts them on the watch list automatically and won't let them get on the airplane. No, if you want to come over here from Saudi Arabia, I don't think they should that you should be able to do that. And if you do, you need to be watched. It's very you need to be scrutinized to the fullest. You can't be just out there in the world because of what's going on with the constant terror attacks let it die down first don't just in the midst of all the, the constant threats and the constant terror attacks just leave the gates of the united states wide open to let anyone come in and do whatever they want because we're getting valid threats from from isis and other terrorist organizations they say they're coming over here there have been threats before to the united states and to Europe, and we've ignored them. Islam has different factions of terrorist cells that have threatened Washington, D.C., and Paris, France before. And we see what happened in Paris, France. 130 people got killed at once, not just in the course of a year or two years. No, one night, within a few minutes, 130 people were killed. So these aren't just vague and just ambiguous kind of threats these are real so we need to figure out what's going on and that was what trump was saying in his actual press release which again you can read in the description box below and i'll also provide you with a link to it so you can see it on his website now that's pretty much all i got to say what i will say is that i'm not i'm not really sure what to think about it because in one on one hand it's a nagging notion in the back of my mind that he's kind of torpedoing himself to kind of sell it a Republican brand. But on the other end, I think that people, I think if he's trying to do that, it's not going to work because people have reached their breaking point. 
people are just like enough is enough. How many more terrorist attacks do we have to have before we do something about it? How many more people do we need to have come over here that threaten us, that want to change the way we live? How much more of this can we sustain? People are getting tired. And someone like Donald Trump is somebody that speaks up for the common person, for the average man who can't, who does not have a voice. The guy that goes to work every day, comes home, watches TV, at the clock, dancing with the stars. And his paycheck is getting is, is becoming less effective. He may make the same amount of money he's been making for the past two or three years, but the money's going. It's it's not going as far. He's seeing his town change. He can't get resources and benefits to help him in his daily life with his wife and his children and his house that he has a mortgage on. But he'll see people talking about refugees coming to his town, getting full benefits. And they're bringing terrorism with them, potentially. He's he's upset. He's fed up. And can you blame him? I can't. Because I feel the same way. And a lot of other Americans do, too. So this could be Trump torpedoing himself. But it could also be Trump understanding what the American citizen is going through. So I'm kind of torn between the two as far as what to think and how to feel about it. But I think overall, in the end, it'll help him. It'll definitely help him. And I think he's pretty much solidified himself now as a front runner, as a as a nominee. Ben Carson has slid backwards. And it's because the media has successfully painted him to be an idiot. And because he doesn't have the fire within him to really fight back. You know, Ben Carson is not used to having to be engaging in these political fights. He's used to being in, in more controlled environments. Not necessarily out here where everyone is trying to paint a narrative about you that's not true. They're trying to make you out to be something that you're not. He's not used to that. So I think he'll pretty much bow out soon. And if he doesn't, he'll be a vice president, maybe. Or he'll be involved with someone's campaign or the cabinet in some kind of way. And the only other person that can give Trump a run for his money is Ted Cruz. Because again, like I said before in previous videos, Ted Cruz is like in the center. He's not so far extreme right like Donald Trump or the way Donald Trump appears to be. And he's not so calm and subdued like Ben Carson. He's right in the center. He's not so verbose like Trump and he's not so quiet like Carson. So it'll either be Trump Cruz or Trump Carson. In the comments, if you're offended... You won't vote for him, and you probably weren't going to vote for him anyway. That's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please rate, comment, share, subscribe. Peace.